Okay, everybody, please take place. Uh -huh. I, we have one minute. Please uh, take place. We have to start the session. Yeah. Okay, welcome back to session. Uh, we have uh, two presenters now, two presentation. And uh, the first one is Hilda Brisch. And uh, he will present the performance assessment framework for a smart ventilation system. Please. Hey, thank you. Uh, yes, my presentation is, is the result. Wait, whoops, which one is it? The blue or the white one? I will present uh, some outcomes of a project that not only we did, of course, it's a national project, but we did it together with Ghent University, with Jelle Laverge, and with uh, other researchers from the University of Antwerp, of Eindhoven, and also Buildwise, the new name of BBRY. And the name of the project was Towards Smart Ventilation in Mid-Size Buildings. Just like this, yeah, okay. I think... Most of you know this definition, what is a smart ventilation system? I will shortly go through it. So yeah, it, it's a system that continually adjusts itself. Uh, it res it's responsive to occupancy, outdoor thermal and air quality, and so on. And it can provide information. But we all know that most systems are not smart still now. And especially if you look in mid-sized buildings, then yeah, we design or engineers design buildings that, uh, yeah, that have minimum requirements. We think of minimum ventilation rates and so on. And if you, how can you design an optimized system? Yeah, of course, our engineers are very proficient and they have, but yeah, we, we rely on their brains and most of the time it's okay, but we're not sure it is the optimal system. So that was a starting point of our project. And what we wanted to do then was we need, we wanted to optimize the system and optimize you do based on something. So that's why we first wanted to find a performance-based framework. I think that that's what we all want to do. And then do the optimization based on the whole life cycle. And we will do it on based on costs. So you see here some specific goals. Uh, and I will show you some results of of the three of them. So first, uh, we wanted to define uh, some performance sub-indicators, so not IAQ, but others uh, like satisfaction, like resilience, like acoustics, and so on. And then we want to aggregate all these, and also the, 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 the normal one, the energy, for example, in one economic performance indicator. And we will use this one uh, to, optimize, uh, to optimize, sorry, and optimize the layout and the last one, I will not explain you here, but you can find uh, some papers of us and also the, on the website uh, to improve and optimize the positioning of the connections like indoors and also outdoors. And yeah, maybe some question of you, what is a mid-sized building? We define it as a building with an airflow larger than 1000 cubic uh, meter per hour. And then we think of small schools, small office buildings, multifamily. Uh, and care facility, and you will see an example of a mixture of an offices and schools. Here, just to show what we will, yeah, as I explained, I will go through the general economic performance indicator, so the performance framework uh, uh, set in another way. Also, I will do a side uh, part and I will show you some on the resilience performance indicator that we developed. And then I will look. Uh, yeah, I will show you how the simulation-based design method, uh, based on optimization, works. So first of all, the general performance. In the, oh, it's it's very uh, light, and it's based on uh, on the research of uh, Connie and Laverge from Un Ghent University. So first, we said, okay, how are we going to tackle this performance assessment? We had some presentations this morning already on performances. 
And we say, okay, we want to set a cost function. So we will want to translate everything into costs. And that's not easy. And But costs you can just summing up. So we want to yeah, include energy use, of course, in the right quality, uh, but also comfort, acoustics, sleep quality, user uh, satisfaction, and so on. So yeah, that's not so easy. And we say, okay, yes, you can see it as we have what we call, or what I will call hard costs. So that's material, that's energy, operational installation costs. So that we say, it's not easy, but it's doable. But then you come to the next part and say, oops, yeah, how to, yeah, how to define the soft costs like health, like productivity loss, learning disturbance. And there is a lot of work already done. And we built up, of course, on this. And we try to yeah, translate this into one cost function that we can use for the optimization. I give you some examples. So, and if you have uh, questions on it, I have to refer to, to Yella because it was not my work. Uh, first of all, hydrothermal comfort. And that lo looks indeed still doable, but it, I think it's a nice definition. So there you go into the difference in energy needs uh, multiplied by the percentage of dissatisfied in between what you have when it's comfortable and when it's not comfortable. So, okay. Then for user satisfaction, we use work uh, done uh, previous by, by Pavel Varkovsky, where we have a look at uh, how the productivity loss is related to thermal sensation. That's one of the examples we can use. And we translate it into a cost. This I will not explain you anymore because Ben uh, explained it this morning to us, the, the, the DALI method. But this we used as, uh, as the harm as to translate for example, the cost related to acoustics, because in acoustics, yes, how how yeah, how to deal with this? You see, we, the the formula show you that we we have a look at the productivity loss, and on the other hand, we have a look at how the DALI is is translated for noise, oh, yeah, and in noise, and you have the diseases, uh, the impact of the life impact of the disease, and also the probability, and you see it on the on the graph uh, on the right hand side, due to ac acoustic disturbance. So these are all the things included. A lot of assumptions, I know, but it's a performance framework. Of course, we can improve it, but it, at least we have a basis to translate this into a cost. And the last example is the indoor air quality, but I think there was a lot of uh, before the before noon. But to uh, what I want to mention to you is that it's both based on the DALI and the sick building syndrome. So there you have an idea how the framework was built on, how it will be implemented, I will show you just uh, after. Uh, but first, I want to go to a side path on the resilience. I think a lot of you have heard about resilience. How, yeah, why is it important? Uh, it is important because, yeah, in normal situation like we are now, then we have expected indoor and outdoor conditions. And okay, we can design something that we have a good thermal comfort, good indoor air quality, it will work and also energy efficient. But sometimes we have unexpected events uh, and this can be uh, a flooding like we have now in Italy at the moment. It can be an earthquake like you have a lot of times in Japan. But we will not tackle this. We will look into uh, other disruptive events like it can be a heat wave, but more specifically for ventilation, uh, it is our other disruptive events. Like uh, on the right hand side, you see, when the outdoor, when there is an excessive outdoor pollution, think uh, of, of a traffic jam, but also of a wildfire. We had a lot in uh, Australia and also in California. Also mechanical disruption, power outages, it will happen more and more, but also just failure of the fence of our uh, an HVAC system. And also internal disruptions. Now we are not so many people here, but it is possible that uh, there is an excess of occupants. So these are the Disruptive events we have identified, but you can have you can identify more. What are you doing then with this? Here you see on this graph, and I will try if I can find yeah I can find the pointer. Here you also see how how the resilience work. So in the beginning, yeah, we just have normal conditions, and then the red arrow we have. A shock, one of the shocks I just explained to you. And then you see that the, the concentration of one of the pollutants is increasing a lot. And we will take into account how much is, it is increasing. That is what we call the, the degree of impact. 
And then, yeah, it can be come to a maximum. We don't know. But at the green arrow, then the, the shock effect is stopped. For example, there was a power outage started here and it stops there. And then you see a decrease a decrease afterwards. What is also important, except the degree of impact, is how long does it take, and you see it here, T, T2 minus T1, how lo long does it take to reach a maximum level that we have to define? So this is what we call the absorbti absorptivity of the shock. And then, of course, also, yeah, when the decrease is going fast, that is the recovery time. So you see three, three important parameters, the degree of impact, of course, absorptivity and recovery. And that's how we built a resilience score. This is now the uh, uh, Dua Al-Assad who, is, who, is develop, uh, who developed this is now, I think her manuscript is almost ready for, for uh, to submit for a journal. She built up a resilience score and you see here the three aspects I just mentioned to you. And there you can do for different pollutants. And we discussed these pollutants, I think also this morning, uh, like the PM, the PM 2.5 is in there, also VOCs uh, and it can be more of course. And then you can have triangle like this and then you have a kind of score. Next step, still in development, is how to assess these scores. Because you want to have, in the end, you want to have like a label that you can say, okay, this ventilation system is resilient, is a resilient system, is a label A or a label D, and that's what we want to go in the end. But like that, of course, uh, research is never done, so it will be developed after the project, because the project already ended uh, end of last month. Okay, but let me come back to the core of the project. So how to use this performance assessment framework. Then we will go to how to optimize a system design. We will use this. Uh, yeah, here you see an example of a floor plan of an, uh, an office building with offices and classrooms is of the building of the University of Antwerp. And then you see here in the red dots are yeah the, the points where you want to have, uh, uh, yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a supply, but yeah, it, it's a visualization of the supply. So yeah, you want to find a ductwork configuration. But if you think for yourself, yeah, you would like you, maybe you would design it like okay, you will have uh, a duct in the corridor and then uh, some deviations to the meeting to the rooms. That should be one of the uh, solutions. We will see in the end that it's okay. It's one of the solutions, but maybe it's not the optimized one. We want to optimize on these hard costs I, I mentioned before, but also on the soft costs, so the difficult one. That's what we want to do. Yeah, and how does it work? What is the input? Yeah, the input is here. Like you see, you have all the people. You have, like we call, yeah, of course, you have the floor plan. You have, like we call, the an input profile based on the profiles in the room. Like, for example, here you have an office with five persons. That can be a profile like this. You see how the, the variation is in occupants, but also what can the floor, is it a high flow rate? Is it a low, is it a middle, or is it a lower flow rate? That's what you have to uh, specify as a client. This profile will then be uh, translated, this is the profile here, translated into the soft costs, so for health, productivity, and so on, but will also be translated in an optimal ductwork. These two, this will then will be translated in hard costs. And then here in solution, it comes together. You have a solution with hard costs and soft costs. And if you ask me which one is the largest costs, the soft costs are much larger than the hard costs. Then you have something that we call a list of best solution. And then you have to decide as an owner or as a designer, you have to decide if is this enough for me or do I want to have an extra profile? like. We had, we had three profiles, then we will have more examples. And then we will generate a Pareto front. I will show you an example like here. So you have much more, so you don't have one ideal solution. You have a front with more solutions. And then it's up to you to decide which solution you will take. And that is the, yeah, this depends on what you think is more important for you. If you say, okay, for me, the energy cost is more important, you will have another solution than you think the IQ cost is more important. Okay, I will show you an example where it's shown. So this is the case, is a photo of this office building in, in Antwerp. 
and yeah, yeah, like you see, it's a new building and we will take one floor out of this. Okay, then I hope, oops, I hope I can, because there is a button that showed, oh, I don't know if the animation is going to work. Maybe we can put it off. You can do it. Maybe we first have to put this off. Ah, okay, thanks. Hopefully you can see it. So on the left, you can see the existing design, a traditional one, which I should also design. And on the right hand side, you see an, an optimized design. And I think you can see it here that it's not one duct in, in the in the in the corridor, but you see another. And what you see here is that this optimized design has hard costs that are 15% lower than the, the existing design that we have here. So that's based on our method that you have uh, another design. So I will end with a short summary or conclusions. I think it, I hope I show to you that there is need for design guidance for smart ventilation and also other ventilation systems. And we explicit we explicitly uh, have here about um, the the mid sized buildings. Uh, we developed a performance assessment framework for this, and of course we can still improve this. So if you have some ideas to improve, you're welcome. And we uh, implemented this in an optimization design method uh, that can be used. And it's also still in development. We will, uh, the, the partner of uh, Antwerp University will go on with, with this to develop this further. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions? We have time for questions, please. Yes, thank you, Hilda, for your presentation. Um, I, I had a question about the optimization um, because you said you have two uh, types of costs, the soft costs, the, the hard costs, and the soft costs are dominant, you said. So if that is the case, is the ductwork layout then still very important? That's a question we, we also discussed about. Yes, I think so. Yes, but indeed, uh, yeah. It, and then it also depends. I say it's much larger, but of course it depends what you think is more important. As an investor, if you say, okay, we want to have more on the hard cost, then of course the ductwork is indeed more important than you rely on the soft cost only. Yeah, I know. And then in terms of ductwork layout, I, I saw the optimized design probably assumes that there are uh, lowered ceilings everywhere. Because uh, uh, the, yes, the, the yes. ducts run through all the rooms, but in some cases, this is not desirable. Nope. So so how does the, the optimization algorithm deal with that? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, you're right. I think there was an assumption that there were indeed uh, lower ceilings everywhere. Uh, you, there are boundary conditions that you can give. So then it will indeed be an other uh, solution. Yes. Thank you. More questions? I have a question. Uh, you have several factors all the time, mm -hmm. but you cannot have a 100% uh, optimization of all of them. How can you mix different factors together? Uh, how how we did it here? We did not mix them. We just yeah we translated into a cost and sum up all the costs. So, but they have an effect to each other. What do you say? They have an effect to each other. Uh, yeah, we did not uh, assume, assume that there are correlations. That you're right. Maybe indeed, if you want to go further, some of, but some of them have. Uh, but I'm thinking a lot of them. No, no, don't have. No, maybe Yella can answer better the question. He did the work, so. So it, it depends on which parameters you're talking about. Um, so all of those that. Um, 
are based on the physical response, so noise level. Um, so increasing the ventilation rate will probably increase the noise level, things like that. Um, those are taken into account. So the, the idea is that we calculate for the um, given solution the predicted noise level. I don't mm -hmm. think Hilde mentioned it, but there's also uh, a work package that focused on simulating the expected noise level through ventilation yeah, in I the space. And so that is taken into account to then account for the expected um, uh, harm, well, um, uh, disturbance of that noise level. So some of the interactions are taken into account. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, my question is actually, um, if you look at the productivity, for example, so mm -hmm. you have a noise, you have a temperature, and you have a view, for example. So three different components you have, so you have to think about it. You cannot have a 100% good view, 100% good noise, and 100%. So it affects each other in the end for the cost. So how can you handle this one? Well... As Hilde said, here we we assume correlations from literature between noise level and mm -hmm. productivity, uh, light and productivity, and so forth. Um, and for that, for those, we don't assume that uh, there is a correlation because we, um, well, we discussed this, but we think that it's justified because um, the potential options stay relatively close to each other. Um, so they don't go very far from the, the starting point. And then um, assuming that there's no correlations um, is justifiable. Thank you very much. More questions? No. Thank you very much.